There, there's a two minute delay or something. Is there? Yeah, but she said that in the webinar, didn't she? Right. Well, it's still going to be broadcast. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Right, 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 right. So we're live now, look. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Are we live? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're live. <laughs> Um, so today we're just we're starting with some new software. So I got some uh, broadcasting software. We're looking here, and uh, we're trying it out today. Yeah, so it means that we can show you images and photos and give you more detailed explanations. That's my 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 thing is talking about my photos. And um, so and eventually it will also be your photos. Yes. When we do some sessions for you. So um, <laughs> today crazy hair today. Who are you? I am Diana Bird. And I'm Anthony Epps. We run a photography workshop business and I'm a writer and Anthony is the um, photographer. photographer. I'm a photographer, yes. And we're in very hot, sunny Spain. <laughs> um, Hence the, the, the shine. <laughs> I haven't got air conditioning I really quite yet. I my forehead. Um, <laughs> And today we're going to talk about the compositional tool leading, leading lines. lines. We're talking about leading lines because leading lines are one of the uh, the main guides in photography that really add dyn uh, dynamic energy to your images. And we've got all kinds of lines. We've got dynamic lines, we've got horizontal lines, and we've got vertical lines, uh, diagonal lines, and they all convey different types of energy. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples and type talk about the different types of lines and the energy and uh, the emotion that they convey and how to use them in your photography or how how they're being used in my photos i don't want to tell you what to do but this will give you an example of how to use leading lines in your photographs fantastic how about I that die does I'm that sound cool that sounds very cool i'm just checking that we are live are we are we still live? Is yeah. that us live? Oh, there's some people watching. There's some people watching. Yes. Hello, please say hi. And you're gonna get all the call chats and stuff on on there. From you need to cancel that phone call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, please put in your comments um, as and questions as and when you have them. So um, I wanted to start this um, little chat about leading lines. Uh, with a quote from Ansel Adams which totally contradicts what we're going to say but the what? reason I'm saying it is because this is news to me like any rule or guide or tool you know it's it's not um, a, a thing to obsessively follow this is a piece of information it's a tool that you can use but you don't have to kind of adhere to it in a in a kind of fixed mindset. That's why we say so guides, not rules. These are guides, okay? It's like one more tool, and you take it out and use it when you need it. But you got to know how to use it. Yeah. You know? So Ansel Adams. You said, ever see a four-year-old use a hammer? Not pretty. <laughs> Unless they've had a couple, you know, they've hit a couple nails and been successful, then they get used to it. You know, you know what I mean by that. You got to know how to use them. So. Um, Ansel Adams said there are no good there are no rules for good photographs only good photographs and can I just give you one other one it's, uh, it's not Edward too cryptic West, it's not too cryptic that's pretty cryptic yeah I just thought it, it adds good. a little bit of lightness so all the information you're going to hear today which is all very useful which and has made um, Anthony the you know um, the photographer he is today in that he's adapted these rules to his passion you know, hold it lightly. Get what you want out of it. Pick up the ideas that excite you and leave everything else behind. Can I say hello, Victoria and Jacqueline and Claudia? Uh, thank you. Is our sound still on? Sound is off for a few seconds. I hope I hope it's not still off. Well, apparently... I really well, appreciate you taking, um, being patient with us today. We're trying to make so it... Something new, something a bit more dynamic. Yeah, we want to make these presentations, these talks, really exciting. My computer's screaming. It's like, we're recording video and doing live broadcasting. And it's so hot. You know what I'm saying? I know. Okay. All right, let's get started. So, Leading lines. I have got... Um, Tell me the purpose of using leading lines in your photography, Anthony. The purpose of using leading lines. Leading lines are used to draw the eye to the subject. 
Simple as that. And we have, I'll tell you, um, for example, leading lines are, are good at conveying emotion, right? So we use uh, horizontal lines, like these lines here, horizontal lines, right? Peaceful, calming lines, very, very centering. Okay, thank you guys for the, uh, the sound uh, uh, update. update, yes. So horizontals are, horizontal lines are very calming. They take the eye very smoothly from left to right or right to left, depending on who you are. I'm not going to say how your eye travels um, per individual, but they're very calming, right? I mean, these are very calming scenes, and using horizontal lines in this kind of scene, you know, I think because the horizon is so ubiquitous with our life, you know, that horizon line, us as human beings, we find that extremely calming. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, a, a skyline or an ocean, not a sky, not a city line, but you know, just, just the horizon line, the natural horizon line, is very calming for us human beings. And can I then, ask Anthony, yeah. with the um, horizontal line, does it matter where the horizontal line is in your image? Does it create different feelings depending on where the line is? If it's horizontal, well, if you if you don't have it like in the middle, you know, then you're then you're having the rule of thirds, right? There's like three places you could put a horizontal line. Classically, you know, your bottom third, uh, the middle, or the top third, right? Um, but it doesn't really where you put it does matter. It does. Matter. It does so matter. Does it right? change the feeling of calm well, depending on? what part of the image it's in. Well, look at these two here, right? Yeah. So I've got one that's, this one in, on the left here, on the right, is about in the middle. And this one on the left is a bit uh, nearer to the bottom third. I mean, the, the you know, the, the, the line is not saying much, diff not saying anything really different between them. Right. But, you know, the choice here is like, for the photographer, it's the aesthetic choice. is like, do you want more sky or more foreground? Mm-hmm. You know, I suppose it's a it's a balanced thing, more more than anything. Right. So. So you're going to create calm regardless yeah. of where the horizontal line. Is. Right, right, right. Yeah. So horizontal lines are always going to create some kind of calm and serenity feeling. Okay. Mm. Now let's go to. Let me just make sure. I'm doing the software right. Yeah. So let's go back to this, um, the Lightroom here. And let's look at uh, diagonal lines now, right? Ooh. Okay, so now you can see diagonal lines. Unfortunately, I haven't figured out a way to draw on the screen yet, but you can see the guy in the middle here, right? And this line here and this line here, he's surrounded by lines. He's got a line coming up, you know, right through the middle, and these two lines and a stone there. And he also has this line coming down on his head. And all these lines are going right to my subject, you know? And these are, these are lines of movement. Right, mm -hmm. your eye is swiftly going through the picture. It's not. This is not terribly dynamic, um, high energy because the lines stop mid frame, right? But uh -huh. they're all taking you right to that middle guy there, mm -hmm. for my subject, right? With, without a doubt, he's right there, and that's where the lines are taking you. So let's let's find some more dynamic lines of higher energy, right? So these lines are going right through my subject. I don't have to draw these here, they're pretty, they're in white, you know, the painted lines on the road, and the lines are zooming right through the picture. Two mm -hmm. lines zooming right past my old dog here, right? Laying right in the middle of the back bike path. And what a nice I saw him from like, I saw him from like 300 meters away, and I, you know, I boogied over there just, just to get his picture because I said, that's pretty funny, yeah. you know, the dog sitting there in the, in the middle of the bike path. He um, don't care, he's an Istanbuli dog, he rules the city. And he's, and I like the contrast, he's all chill and relaxed, and then he's yeah. in this kind of, you can tell it's a dynamic lane, can't you? That yeah. he's, I feel like he's going to get crushed, I feel a bit... You know, the vanishing there. point, the vanishing point to this image, right, is, is off screen, it's somewhere over here, right, because mm -hmm. these two, these two lines are converging, right, and they're going to converge somewhere off screen, and so that... You know the, the brain fills that in and, and it feels like there's a triangle shape and these lines are boom zooming to that point and the dog uh -huh. is he's like an element that's you know just interrupting that energy and it's it's a good contrast of uh 
It's a contradiction. It's a contradiction. Do you, you say that in photography, contradiction? No, we should say it more. It's pretty good. Yeah. No. Juxtaposition. So far, I've showed you lines that were actually real, you know, like physical lines, like the lines painted in the road and the, and the physical horizon. But, you know, l light can also make lines. I just wanted to show for an example, like, like here, we've got this light coming in, right? Am I, uh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've got the light coming here, and the light has created a line right to this woman, right? Mm -hmm. I've got a, I think I've got another one here. And the light oh, here, I, like that one. I don't really like this shot, <laughs> but it shows that, you know, I've created, I've, I've used the light as a shape, but that there are also lines, right? These are very distinct lines that are drawing the eye to, to my subject, yeah. right? And this guy was like, Paul, oh, he's just power walking. Power walking, yeah, Mr. Style. Yeah. But it, I, I mean, also in this, you've got lines, but you've also got a bit of framing as well, haven't you? Yeah. L the light is framing your subject. Yeah. The lines are sh framing your well, subject. Well, the lines, it's but the lines are created by, uh, by light, you right. know. So, lines don't have to be painted. They can be, uh, they can be anything. I mean, you can use light, the edge of light and shadow for a line. That's mm. why I wanted to show you this image, right? Interesting. Yeah. And here we have, you know, a good example of leading lines. Not perfect, but, you know, they come up dynamically from the bottom and they lead the eye right to your the castle up here. I've never seen that picture before. All the one before. Where, where is that, Anthony? It's, uh, it's Palermo. Ah. And here's light again, right? I have, I have a very thin light, a thin, thin beam of light going through the photograph here, and it is a line that is leading you right to the subject. And I have to say, right. if you didn't have that light, what a boring photograph that would be. Yeah, I just I just stood there for like 10, 15 minutes trying to get an interesting image of people walking through that beam of light. Um, please ask any questions, uh, any questions you have at all as we're going on our little journey of leading lines. And here's say a, hi and where you're tuning in from. Yeah, so here's another example of a, a dynamic line, right? Coming from the bottom left, you know, up through the middle of the image to the the, the top third where I have my, my door here, right? Mm. So you, you purposely stood there yeah. to get the line to go up to the door. But what attracted to me, this is a boring light day. You know, it was London in the morning, and it was like a hammered sky of lead. It's like November, wasn't it? Yeah, it was cold. You could see the you could see the blue. I mean, the light was really flat, but this door just really stood out. And as I approached the door, I you know I saw the sidewalk, and I said, like, "Well, that's a that's a nice curve that'll lead me right to the interesting subject there." And also got this point over here, which is really nice, that reflecting or that light source there, the bulb. So I've used the leading light to draw the eye through the scene to my subject. And that's the main point of leading lines is to use them in a way to draw the eye towards your subject. You don't want to use, you want to make sure that you're, you're not using a, if you have a powerful line in your photograph, you want to make sure it's not taking away from your subject because mm -hmm. I've seen people do that, mm -hmm. you know, they'll have a line, they'll have their subject here and then they'll have converging lines going out of the shot this way. Yeah. And they're, you know, it's a, it's a nice dynamic shape, but your subject's over here. Right. And so the eye goes, whoop, whoop. Mm. You want people to look here, but those lines are drawing the picture, the, pe the eyes out of the photograph. So if they're in your photograph, you got to make sure you're using them properly. Right? That they're relevant, that there's a point. Extremely relevant. There's a point to having the lines yes. in your photograph. So horizontal lines are calming, right? Mm. Uh, dynamic lines again diagonal and dynamic, dynamic. and diagonal line are, are high energy right you've got a lot of movement here in the in the shadows right you feel that the movement in the shadows I mean the lines are just they're yes. going they're, these are these are rushing out of the bottom oh I see here, right? oh the they're, trees yeah, I thought you were talking about the the one on the bottom. No, no, I'm talking, bottom. see, the trees, yes. the trees are a shape, yeah. but there's also a very strong line that takes you to the building, and then they and then they go vertical. Uh, they're freaking me out. And then vertical lines, right? Mm. Uh, am I actually showing people this? No, I'm not showing people this. Oh, no. No, oh, no, sorry, guys. We're uh, Okay, so. This is the picture freaking me out. Yeah, this is the picture freaking die out. So we got the lines at the bottom here, 
right? And they're going towards the building at, at a diagonal, right? A dynamic uh, path. And then they go semi-vertical and kind of spread out into the chaos, mm -hmm. right? But those lines in the bottom half, the shadows, are, you know, moving towards the building. And you've I, got energy towards the subject, right? Uh, I totally see that now. But you've also got this kind of contradictory line. Oh, the bike path. Yeah. I think the bike path is much weaker. But it's sort of cutting across, isn't yeah. it? I think yeah. We, I think Sorry, we think Victoria. We, we cut away. Yeah. But ho hopefully you can see it now. You'll see it now. <coughs> yeah. Now it is on T great. T U? Ooh. Is that internet speak? T U. T U. Thank you. Oh, woohoo! <laughs> we figured it out. I'm clever like that. We didn't have to <laughs> ask our teenage son. Um, it's about to go get. Okay, so um, one line, what type of line I didn't really talk about was uh, vertical, vertical lines, line. right? I don't, I didn't uh, source a really good example, but I think this is the closest I have to vertical lines. And vertical lines are about strength and structure, right? They're power. They're solid. They're powerful, and if you put them, you know, on the left and the right of your photo, like a, you know, you can trap the eye in the photo um, with a vertical line. Trap the eye. Well, the eye will, uh, I don't know if I have a... It's a bit like, I remember a number well, of like pictures. Well, like this, like this, like we got a yeah. strong vertical here, right? Yeah, and, and the, the line of the... Um, the the is that a column? Some kind a of column, column, yeah, yeah, on the building, right? So these are very kind of strong, powerful, sturdy lines. But the light here, you know, your eye wants to come in, but it doesn't really travel into the shadow, does it? No, it stays in here. Yeah, your eye stays in here because these horizontal lines, you know, kind Trapping of trap it in there. That's yeah, interesting. added benefit of it being light too, you know, and the contrast keeps your eye there also. And I've noticed that That's actually cool, in huh? a number of your photos, maybe because you're photographing a lot of old cities, mm. that you have a little columns that you're using almost as kind of framing. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I do that quite a bit, you know. Um, don't know what particular shots you're talking about, but <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we can find some. <laughs> so we had horizontal lines creating calm. Horizontal lines are like Zen, right? Mm. Yeah, because of the horizon. Yeah. You know, we evolved around a horizon line and looking off into the distance of the horizon, I believe, is a very calming um, uh, practice that we do. We've been doing for hundreds of thousands of years. Then we have the vertical lines. We have vertical lines power. for strength and strength. structure and I wouldn't say power so much, but yeah, they can be very, very powerful. powerful. And we can use those to trap the eye in a, in mm. a very particular uh, part of the photograph or just keeping it from bouncing out, you know? Like you have a strong tree, like half a tree on the side of the frame there, right? You know, the eye can hit the tree and bounce right back into the photograph. Mm. I'm gonna pretend my arm is the tree, yeah? So like this, so you got a big tree like this and then the, and then the, uh, it's oh, all back. It's and so then the, the eye comes like this and then goes back out. Mm. If there's nothing there, the eye could travel through <laughs> Nothing would stop and just it. carry on into infinity. Yeah, and you what, know, what, what would happen then? That's part of the reason why we put uh, pictures in frames to keep the eye, you know, contained. Contained, right? Not wandering off directly. So you can use vertical lines in conjunction with natural framing. Mm. Okay. So then we have dynamic line and diagonal lines, which dynamic energy. lines, which are energetic, you know, movement. Mm. Um, if you really want the 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 eye to be led around. Uh, dynamic lines are probably your best bet to get the eye to your subject, right? Uh, here's here's a dynamic line, mm. right? This is my best examples of dynamic line today, right? Going straight to the subject mm. with with movement and energy. I think this is a really good example, but this can be interpreted many ways. I have some uh, dynamic you, lines here too, right? So this line here on the top of this uh, um, container, you know, that from comes from the top there to down to the middle to the buildings, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the this is the focal point of the image. This mm -hmm. horizontalish line, this line here, they all converge at this point here where my buildings are at, and that was all intentional, 
I know it might look like, oh, but you know, I wanted that, these lines to converge right here in that third. Mm. And I think that's why it makes such a strong shot. And I suppose this is also connecting in with the idea of seeing the world as a, as um, breaking them down into elements and shapes and forms. Yeah. That, you know, this is, by using leading lines, you're giving your mind the the kind of ability to start seeing the world in more shape and form type of a way. Well, that's the thing with, the, that's why we study composition, right? Because mm. when we study composition, we start to see the world in a different way. We start to see it as separate elements. And how can we use composition to create relationships between those elements? Mm -hmm. You know, and you start to see this everywhere. You know, it's kind of, you got to use that. Or you go mad. You know, you got to take a picture. You got to paint it or something. Or you go mad. You know, <laughs> or we use those compositional yeah. uh, tools to help build relationships between elements. And leading lines is one of the strongest ways to to connect elements. And when I say elements, I mean your subject and some supporting elements. Yeah, leading lines can really, it can really be the glue that holds them together visually. Mm. Um, so what are your top recommendations for bringing leading lines into your compositions? Well, first I would say, go out and look for them. Mm. You're gonna start seeing leading lines everywhere, not just the roads and the horizons and, and buildings. Um, yeah, but when you're, when you're shooting something, You've got an interesting subject. It could be a portrait, a landscape. See, look around you for, for lines that you can add to your composition that are going to enhance your subject. You know, make your subject more of what it is, mm -hmm. right? That's, that would be my advice. And then can we just finish one? I want to look at that tulip picture from um, Istanbul. And I want you to tell me why you added that to your gallery. What was the oh why 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 was the, why the was line that so aspect of that that you felt was important? Oh, I just thought because in this image here, right, I've got I've got loads of lines, right? They're all partial mm -hmm. lines, and they're all you know like flowers do. They all are curving and pointing the same way, mm -hmm. and they're pointing to this top third more or less. Mm -hmm. I got the feeling that these lines were saying, hey, look at the sun, right? Oh. And the flats, what the flowers do, they look at the sun. And, it, yeah. you know, when I was beneath the blooms, they all kind of curved up right to the sun, and it looked fantastic. Mm -hmm. and I thought this is a good example of very subtle use of, you know, a different type of line. Yeah. Now, this is a, this is a mostly vertical lines, you know, and they have structure. Mm. They're, they they feel strong, you know. They're holding up those big bulbs uh, in the flower, and they're all pointing to this this top left third. I also what think is what's interesting about this is that the vertical lines that we talked about, structure and strength. Yeah. Because they are repeated, and I've seen this in other images of yours. There's something about the repetition that is also quite calming to the eye. It's quite pleasing to the eye to see repetitive lines and repetitive patterns. Um, patterns. We love patterns, yeah. Mm. I mean, if you can find a, a good pattern with some lines, you know, you've got some elements for a very good composition. You can make it very interesting with patterns. I don't mm. talk about patterns enough, you know, and... Um, yeah, but you do have a lot of patterns. I do a lot of patterns, and but it, it's um, not something I, s I speak about a lot. I'll have to work on that for Let's you. do that next week. All right. Yeah. I'll have to think through my archives for patterns. Um, does anyone, before we head off, would love to have any questions that you might have about leading lines? If you enjoyed that little foray, little short bit of inspiration teaching, we hope that you found something fascinating in there. I hope you're still here. You guys still here? <laughs> Just gotta take it. I think there's a bit of a delay, so. Yeah. Um, um, and we are heading to our next month for a fantastic photography retreat where we will be doing things like this, but in a much, much, much deeper way, really getting into advanced composition, advanced technical skills, taking you from, um, whatever, whatever stage you're at, whether you're a beginner in an intermediate. Uh, we're all on different stages of the journey and um, we'd love to help you really elevate and transform your photography this summer. We'll be in our at the end of August. 
um, during the photography festival. I mean, you can always, uh, I think that's one of the most important exciting. parts about it for because we get immersed and we go look at exhibitions and we uh, deconstruct images and read about why the photographer did what they did. We meet some of the photographers, it's fantastic. So it's sort of this kind of whole um, ambience of photography in the town. It's a beautiful little town in the mm. south of France. And then really going on your own creative and technical photography journey, as well as doing printing with expert yes. printer Anthony Axe, who just added got sessions on printing. Got a brand new printer, A3 Plus printer that is fantastico. And uh, we're going to set it up and we're going to do some killer portfolio printing. So you will come back with but only amazing stuff images that, to show. Only stuff that you shot in oral. That's, yeah. the, that's the thing. Yeah. But that'll be, be fun. A great challenge. That's the challenge. That's the challenge. We have two spaces left. We'd love you to join us. If you want any information, we're going to put the link in the video or private message us or send a, add a comment. Uh, it's going to be an amazing retreat. Any other questions you have, also pop them in the comments. We'll be going back and answering them. And tomorrow, we're going to be doing a very special Facebook Live about how, how I, I got the shot. shot. Yes, so I'm going to be dissecting a, a single image of my choice. And uh, I'm going to tell you how I went about capturing it. Thank you, Victoria. That's very kind of you to Thank say. Thank you, Victoria. We'll be back tomorrow. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.